Hi, YouTube family. It's Daughter of the Most High. I have a video I want to make a few comments on, but because I'm not tech savvy at all, I'm going to do it this way. When I'm speaking, I'm going to have my camera on me. Then I'm going to share part of the video right over here. And this is the guy from What Do You Meme, the channel. Um, and he actually has um, an interesting channel. I don't watch it a whole lot, but I watch it sometimes. So um, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm just doing this with my hand. I'm um, moving my camera to position it so it's a little bumpy. But anyway, so he um, made this video about four days ago, December 31st. And when I watched this video, I was like, you got to be kidding me. So I'm going to play the video for you. Um, he is commenting on the video as well. The video is Elon Musk um, doing an interview with Babylon B. And uh, I'll stop there and we're going to watch a little bit of it. And then I have some comments to make. So here we go. Here we go. I actually just got done recording a video on Elon Musk and I was about to start editing when I saw a lot of people were sending me this clip of him on the Babylon B and they wanted to hear my thoughts and my response to it. I don't have time to really do a full breakdown, so I figured I might as well just play it right now and then I'll give my thoughts on it as we go along. Mm -hmm. So let's just go ahead and check it out. The Babylon B is a Christian organization, you know, and uh, we're a ministry. Well, they, well, how come we're doing the show on a Sunday? Why don't you keep us in church? <laughs> exactly. So we have to make a church this right now. This is supposed to be a day of rest. So we did Zoom church. To do, justify it. Like God said, <laughs> don't work on Sunday. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and go straight to hell for this one. Get into the whole Jesus rest <laughs> thing. Okay. Straight to hell. So this is church. This is church. I, so, okay. So to make this church, we have to do, we have to make sure. Just to, We're wondering if you could do us a quick solid and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. <laughs> On Real the quick. show. Okay. Real quick, this is already awkward to me because I can't tell if they're being serious or if they're kidding. <laughs> or if it's something like a mix between or something. Not sure. But let's see what he says. Um, personal Lord, <laughs> okay, look at that face. He's clearly visibly uncomfortable right now. I can tell that this is just uncomfortable for him, but we'll just see how he responds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting more awkward. I mean, let's just say, like, I agree with the principles that Jesus advocated, um, and th that the you know, there's some, some, there's great wisdom in what, in, in the te teachings of, of Jesus. Uh, okay, pause right there for a sec. What I've noticed is that a lot of times when people are uncomfortable, when you're trying to evangelize to them, a lot of times I kind of default to saying something like, hey, um, yeah, well, Jesus was a good person. You know, I agree with a lot of the stuff he said, but they're never going to say that they agree with the stuff he said when it comes to salvation. They'll just talk about his principles for living and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that's what Elon is doing here, but that's what I've seen a lot of people do when they're uncomfortable. So that could be what's going on here, but let's continue to see what he says. And I agree with those teachings. Um, and things like turn the other cheek are, it, are very important because as opposed to an eye for an eye. Um, an eye for an eye leaves everyone blind. So forgiveness, you know, is important and um, treating people as you would wish to be treated. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay. So far, I'm actually more impressed here because he actually seems to be quoting the scriptures more so right, as opposed to how Joe Rogan did in the last clip, which I didn't talk about, but he didn't really quote the verses that he was referencing right at all. The primary principles of... 70% as yes. What? Let's see what he says next. So it's like a 60, 70% as yes. <laughs> as Einstein would say, I believe in the God of Spinoza. Okay, right there. He said he believes in the God of Spinoza. And this is something that Einstein has said before. But what the kind of basic idea is, is that all of the substances in the universe, whether it's thought or material, are all part of God or all extensions of God. Everything is God or like the universe is God, but that God is not personal, is basically the kind of thought behind Spinoza's philosophy. 
All right, oops, I've got a suction cup down here and I actually pushed on it a little bit. So let me comment just a little bit right there. So um, that video is, <laughs> that interview to me is such an epic miss. I mean, here they have Elon Musk, one of the busiest men like ever, in doing an interview at the Babylon Bee. And these guys, you know, they knew that they were going to be in an interview with him. And they, I don't know if they prayed about it. I don't know if they gave it any thought how they were going to approach this man. Um, and if they did plan to share the gospel, um, or if it just went that way when he was calling them, you know, joking with them about being heathens and doing the interview on Sunday kind of thing. Um, I, I'm surprised Elon even knew that much and some of the other stuff he said as well. So um, I don't know Elon um, very well, meaning, you know, from uh, news articles and clips and that sort of thing. I, I don't know a whole lot about him. Um, I do know that he is uh, a very, he, well, he's what, the wealthiest man um, on the earth and he is incredibly intelligent and he has Asperger's. And so that means some social things are um, a bit uncomfortable for him and he's wired a little bit differently, but his um, area of expertise is like shocking, a shocking level of intelligence and ability and uh, stamina to just work, you know, 18 hours a day at his companies. Um, and so they really did, the guys at the Babylon Bee had a, had a glorious opportunity to, um, you know, to meet with him and to speak with him and to share God's truth with him and then to turn it into a gumball machine was just pitiful, in, in my opinion. Absolute and epic miss. And, you know, so there's that. Because let's say, for example, like when we have an opportunity to share the truth, that doesn't mean Elon's going to accept right then and there. He could have, but most likely not. But at least some seeds could have been planted. But when you watch this interview, there's not really, you could, you know, I don't think there were any seeds planted because it was done so tactlessly, you know, it, it, oh my. So, um, and the second thing is, is you know, Elon Musk is a very um, wide known um, man. So let's say he did get saved and what a game changer that would be for him if he truly got to know the Lord and truly began walking with the Lord, what that would mean. And maybe, you know, the level of ministry or impact that that would have on others because he does have such a large platform. And so they've really, again, if I can just say, they missed so badly on this. The second point that I want to make is that they're trying to get him to say the sinner's prayer. Now, the sinner's prayer isn't even biblical, for one thing. You know, when Jesus was coming to the earth, John the Baptist was the forerunner. And what did John the Baptist say? You know, hey guys, we got this prayer that you guys can start praying. You can quit all this religious nonsense that the Pharisees have got you doing that mean nothing and don't change your heart. Um, so we're going to have this little prayer that everybody gets to pray. And if you pray it once, you know, you're good. And yeah, no. And so people sometimes will, or some Christians will actually think if we can just get this person to pray the sinner's prayer. And maybe even for them, it was absolutely, um, you know, said just without any type of um, anointing, drawing, any kind of touch from God, anything. So I'm going to talk about that too. So what they're doing is just trying to get them to say the words. Well, that's meaningless. And then even if someone does, you know, feel drawn, feel the touch from God, um, will bow their head and receive Christ, if they don't follow that through with lifestyle changes and repentance and a daily commitment to God, they don't end up saved anyway. Once saved, always saved is not true and not biblical. 
And certainly not just saying a prayer, a mindless prayer. Sometimes we do that. We say things so mindlessly, you know, the Our Father. Or when I finish up group, we say the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Um, and the clients get so used to saying it at the end of every group that they don't even, you know, they don't even recognize the words they're saying anymore unless they actually break it down and say it in a meaningful way, maybe in their own private time. Um, and so that's like, it, it's such a miss here. And some of these Christian fallacies that people have believed for so long, um, again, we need to make a com commitment to Christ. We need to surrender to Christ. We need to, it's a daily journey of faith and surrender and getting the sin out of our life and seeking God for his help in that and the grace to make the changes that we need to make. Most Christians are just fluffy and flowed through and don't realize that they are to take up their cross daily. Now, if you read the gospel, it, it's just so absolutely evident and clear how many Christians don't read their Bible because you don't have to pick up the Bible and read for very long without realizing that that God means business, that Jesus means business, that he is a no-nonsense Lord, uh, Lord and, and Savior, Messiah, Son of God. He means business. I mean like big time. And so it, we... <laughs> Christians aren't reading their Bible. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're reading devotionals or something all the time. Um, I don't know. And going to fluffy churches. But so I just want to make those points that these guys, it they're taking the absolute most important thing that we can ever do in our life. And they're, they're, they're not handling it with care at all. And I got to just tell you, it bugs me. And so, and plus they missed a golden opportunity with Elon to at least plant some seeds and to show some class as a believer. Do you see what I'm seeing here? Oh, I just, I have really strong feelings about this. So let's go back to the video. We've got a couple minutes left and let's just watch a little bit more, okay? Oops. What did I do? Um, so, um, but hey, if, um, you know, if, if, if Jesus is, is uh, saving people, I mean, I, I, I would stand in his way, you know, like, they'll be sure. I'll be safe, would not I? Okay, now I know that the Babylon Bee does a lot of satire, so they're joking around a lot, and I'm not really sure what their intent was here. But if their intent was to actually really evangelize Elon Musk, then them not providing any context of what he's being saved from just makes them say, well, yeah, Jesus is saving people. I mean, everybody wants to be saved, right? If they're in trouble. So yeah, Jesus saved me too. But he doesn't understand what it is that he's being saved from, which I think is a big problem because when we're evangelizing or talking to people about God and we're trying to help them understand the need for Jesus in their lives, in, in order for them to appreciate the need to be saved, they have to know what they're being saved from and why it's such a big deal. Now, again, I know that the Babylon Bee guys are probably just kind of being funny and saying this more kind of tongue-in-cheek or something like that, but let's just see what he says next. We, we did it? Yeah. I think you just said yes. We got it. All right. We got it. 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 Yeah, I think they were joking. Some overall thoughts and takeaways from this is that it's... Okay. Here I am, that suction cup sticking to my desk again. Okay, so that, that's basically just the gist of it right there. Um, that I've said pretty much everything I need to say. He doesn't seem as upset about it as I am. Um, it is my heart that if um, you get that golden opportunity to share God's truth with someone, um, do it. I don't know that Elon knows anybody that knows the gospel. I mean, look at, just even imagine who's he, who he's surrounded with. And, you know, so this was such a, 
a, a wonderful opportunity for them to at least plant seeds, if not, you know, if God was going to move strongly on Elon, that he could have even gotten saved. So um, when God gives you a platform, and there's a lot of people that have a platform that end up just doing the sugar-coated gospel, or for these guys, you know, getting out the gumball machine, um, you know, God must, I don't know, <laughs> because I don't know if God just thinks, you know, come on, guys. You know, we finally get to the point where you can actually share my truth and you do this. I mean, really? And so, and again, there's some people that maybe have access to more ministry and more um, people in their lives that actually nudge them along. And I don't know that that's the case with Elon. I mean, he's a big businessman that, you know, they're talking business and projects and stuff all the time. I don't know that anyone's reaching out to him and saying, you know, as far as just being a person, you're a person just like me or anybody else. And, you know, you're going to end up in hell if you don't learn about the gospel and actually receive this. You're a sinner in need of a savior. You know, he's he's just like the rest of us in God's eyes. Now, in the world system, he's pretty prominent. But so if he did get safety, he'd have quite quite a platform. Ah, my voice is drying out. I guess that's a sign I got to. Sorry, I just had a giant cough. <laughs> uh, just have a little bit of a cold, not too bad. But anyway, um, I better stop there since my voice is giving out and it's the end of the day and all that jazz. Let me know your thoughts on this if you have strong feelings like I do. All right, have a good rest of your day.